Hi, I'm Glenn. And I'm Brett. And, and we're, we're the Penumbra, Penumbra Brothers. Brothers. We focus on you. Inverse square law with the Penumbra Brothers. So with the inverse square law, there's a few things you need to make sure and be aware of first. You need to be very comfortable with mass or MA in time, SID or source to image distance, and the divergent nature of radiation. So I'll give a brief description of each one of those and also an easy conversion from 40 to 72 inches, which is our most common distance changes. Uh, the plan is to get rid of the old uh, inverse square law. It's very clunky and it is, has a lot of places for you to make mistakes. So let's continue. MA and time. Uh, MA is milliampers, which controls how hot the filament gets. S or time is how long that filament stays hot. Together they are mass, which controls thermionic emission or the amount of electrons that are available to make radiation. Next is SID, or source to image distance. This is the distance from the source of the radiation to the image receptor or detector. So the change in distance greatly affects how much intensity there is within the radiation beam. And divergence. From the source of radiation to your receptor, the beam, the beam diverges or spaces out. So this does not affect the volume of radiation, but it does affect the concentration of radiation. So as you go further out, kind of like a flashlight, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, but there's no less light, it's just spread out over a larger area. So what is the inverse square law used for? Primarily it's for radiation protection. For a technologist, if you're standing two feet from the x-ray tube during an exposure, or you're standing six feet, it tells us exactly how much radiation reduction we're going to receive as a dose. So, the law is the intensity of the X-ray beam is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Really clear, right? So let's take a little bit of a better look at that. So, on the graphic you see here, on each of those blue squares, we're gonna say they're the same size. It's not a perfect graphic, but so we have the same number of photons in each of the large boxes. So as an example, if say we had 120 photons at 40 inches in that blue box you see there, um, at 80 inches in that same blue box, you would have one fourth of the amount of photons. In the larger box at 80 inches, you would have the same number of photons. Second example, if we have 120 uh, photons at 40 inches, if we move back to 120 inches or three times the distance, then we have nine times larger area. So in that same square area, we would have nine times less radiation because it has spread out. So the intensity change is pretty easy to figure out if we're just going by two, three, four, five, or even 80 times. You just square your distance and that's how much less intense the beam is. However, if we're using a different distance, say we're going from 40 to 55 or 70 to 80 inches, it's a little harder to figure out. That's where the inverse square law comes in. So first we're gonna look at the old formula. It's really clunky. We're going to demonstrate the formula. Um, however, this formula does cause you to cross multiply or invert and multiply and then reduce a fraction. There's a lot of places for mistakes to happen during this. So again, this is definitely the old way. So we're gonna use, we're gonna go through the easy formula, which you see here. Um, we'll demonstrate this easy way, easy math, no cross multiplying, no inverting, no confusing formulas. This is just very straightforward, really simple. So we're gonna look at the old formula first. So as you can see the old formula up here, you have a very easy word problem, very simple. Let's say you have eight sieverts per hour at 40 inches. So what would your new dose be, or what would the exposure be at 55 inches? So the first thing we're gonna do is identify our formula. So we're gonna look at all the values for each one of that part of the formula. So in the formula, step one is you plug in your numbers. Step two, you square the distances. 
at step three, you cross multiply as you're shown here, or you can invert and multiply. Either one of those will work. At step four, you reduce your fraction so that you're isolating X. And then as your final step, you just invert the formula so that you have X equals your uh, remaining value. So in this case, 4.23 sieverts per hour at 55 inches versus um, eight sieverts per hour at 40 inches. So that's the old way. So the new way, you can see the formula up here, much, much simpler, same word problem. So we're gonna have the same values over here on the side. So in working the formula, the first thing you do is plug in your numbers, then you square your distances, and then you just multiply, divide, and you have your answer. Super simple, much easier. It was so easy, here's a cool motorcycle. It's actually mine. So what we're also going to do now is we're gonna give a formula for these most common distance changes. For us in the United States, it's 40 inches and 72 inches. Pretty much every place else, it's 100 centimeters and 180 centimeters. So the shortcut, this only works for 40 and 72 inches. So keep that in mind. Don't try to use it the rest of the time. The key is 3.24. So this does work at 100 and 180 centimeters, but the factor is 3.28. Other than that, everything else we see is gonna be exactly the same. So the conversion for 40 to 72 inches, um, and this happens all the time in the word problems. So again, if we're just doubling our distance or multiplying the distance times three times, then we just square that multiplication number and then divide our intensity, pretty easy. But at our distance in 4072, they're not quite that square. So if we are decreasing our distance, our intensity is getting higher. So we multiply times 3.2. If we're increasing our distance, it becomes less intense, so you divide by 3.24. Pretty simple, straightforward, and easy. So does this really work? So let's take a look up here and see if it actually works. So pretty simple word problem. You have 25 millisieverts at 72 inches, so what would you get at 40 inches? So we've already used our proven formula that's pretty quick and straightforward. That ends up with 81 millisieverts. Using our shorter distance, int intensity increases, so you have to multiply. Makes it pretty easy, so we just take our 25 times 3.24, we come up with the answer, 81 millisieverts. When going from 40 to 72 inches, you use the same factor, you just divide rather than multiply. It's like magic, right? Now, does this work with 100 centimeters and 180 centimeter conversion? Exact same thing, everything works as well. The only difference is you use 3.28 instead of 3.24. Okay, our word problem is we have 35 millisieverts at 100 centimeters, what would it be at 180 centimeters? So we're gonna go through our tried and true formula that is the shorter version, and we end up with 10.67 millisieverts. So, same thing, we are going for a longer distance, our intensity will be less, so we divide by 3.28. The multiplication comes out as 10.67, exact same, except it's much simpler. Again, same thing if you're going from 180 centimeters, then you multiply by 3.28 instead of divide. The inverse square law does not have to be complex or difficult. Using our formula here, it's really simple, it's faster, it's easier, less chance of mistakes. Our quick conversion factors from 40 to 72 or 100 to 180 inches, 3.24 or 3.28, works really well, makes it faster and easier. That is the inverse square law made simple with the Penumbra Brothers, where we focus on you.